let's go for a quick little ride. It's dirty, but what can I say? So welcome aboard 1964 Ruthman V80. This little booger here is a boat. This thing is really, really heavy. So when you're coming out of the driveway here, I mean, it's hairy. It's almost like oh, wow, being yeah. in a boat. Look at that. Wow. Crazy, huh? Yeah. It's really, 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 really heavy car. Do you know how much the weight? I don't. I don't. I've got the, the manual for it, but it's uh, it's heavy. I'm just, you know, I was happy that uh, it runs, it drives. Had to put new tires on it. And... Uh, Um, I got to do a little bit of tuning to it, but the interesting thing about this car was the story behind it and how I ended up with it. Um, many, many years ago, this car came over from Germany and it came, uh, it came to Oregon and David Mays was the uh, person that actually owned it out there. Sadly, he's no longer with us, but he, uh, he owned this and I remember it came up for sale. And I thought, oh, that is so cool. You know, I want to go ahead and have a, it's not the fastest car, so you got to be really strategic when you go. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so I saw it come up for sale. I thought it was really cool. And I thought, oh man, I got to have that thing. But couldn't afford it. It was a little more than what I could, uh, could spend. So uh, time went by. And then before you know it, it came up for sale a few years later. I thought, whoa, that's so cool. So I uh, called on it and it had gone from Germany to Oregon and Oregon down here to LA. I thought, no way, it's closer. Unfortunately, the guy that was selling it still wanted a lot of money for it, so I couldn't afford it. Well, then one day I was doing uh, some voiceover work for Adam Carolla up in uh, Glendale. Oops. And I started, uh, I started looking through some ads and um, in the meantime, I found a picture of this thing at a gas station. And I thought, that's so weird. That looks just like the one that, you know, I always wanted. And so I went over there to go check it out because I was actually about four miles away from where this thing was. And lo and behold, it was the same truck. And I asked the guy there whose it was. He said, oh, it's the guy that owns the land. I said, wow, that's really cool. Uh, what does he want to do with it? And he goes, he wants to sell it. And I thought, oh, I wonder if this is the same guy that I spoke to. And uh, anyway, long story short, it ended up not being the same guy. It ended up being another guy, and he ended up letting it go for a very fair price. So I thought, okay, I gotta get this thing. Now, the funny part is, it's one of those, like, careful what you wish for, <laughs> because I thought it was really cool, and it is very cool. But as far as driving this thing, let me tell you, it's a little, it's a little hairy just because of the fact that it is, in fact, so heavy. I mean, really, really heavy. So you've got to be uh, you've got to be quick on the brakes. Obviously, four-wheel drum brakes for this thing. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be driving it a ton, so I'm probably going to go ahead and just leave it with drum brakes. I don't think I'll do a disc brake conversion in this. Uh, it's still six volt, still 40 horse, believe it or not. The next project is going to be actually doing the bucket, and uh, I've seen videos of it working. I believe it was uh, gosh, was it uh, Lind? Lind actually told me that he's been up in it, and uh, I believe Greg Noble's been up in it. They were all friends with David, and so uh, we do know that it does work, which is really cool, but, um, you know, it's obviously going to take, uh, it's going to take a little bit of work, and it's also going to take some serious, uh, some serious guts as well to go ahead and get up there the first time. So I think what I'll probably end up doing is replacing the uh, hydraulic hoses and I'm uh, looking into that, or if not, maybe I'll send the bucket unmanned. Now, when you go around turns, and I've got 10 ply tires on here, when you go around turns, you feel this thing just lean. And <laughs> like I said, coming out of the driveway can be a little bit on the hairy side. And it's slow, but you figure, hey, over there, they were using it, small roads, not going very fast. So kind of cool. I, I like I like commercial buses. They're uh, they're unique. They're fun. And I figured, well, this definitely would be cool. Now, ironically, before I owned this one, I was talking to Bob from uh, 
from BBT, and uh, I was telling Bob that I was interested in getting a bucket truck, and he kind of laughed and said, what do you want one of those for? And I said, oh, I think they're cool. And so uh, he said, well, I have one. And I thought, you do? <laughs> I go, well, that's very cool. We ended up making a deal, and he, had, he ended up having the uh, earliest one uh, known, and uh, it's a V60, so it only has a s single pivot point where this one actually has um, two pivot points and it goes up higher. And uh, anyway, I ended up getting his, and when I got it, I was a little disappointed that it was a little bit rougher than what I thought, even though it's the oldest one in the world. Um, but uh, ironically, like I said, I had that one for, I don't know, maybe two years, and then this one came out, so I thought, well, I might as well go ahead and get rid of uh, the other one. And so uh, my friend Mike from Mike Effin Garage ended up uh, buying it. So he's going to bring that thing back to life. So, kind of cool. All right, we're here at Orange, the Orange Plaza, or as people like to call it the Orange Circle. This thing gets a ton of looks. A ton of looks. Sometimes you go around these trims and you almost feel like the thing's just going to go on its uh, on its pontoons, on its skid plates. <laughs> now the funny part about this was that when I got this car, I was so excited. I uh, got it on the flatbed, ended up uh, bringing it to the shop, but guess what? Unfortunately, when I got there, I realized that, well, and that's still got a tune on the car. When I, uh, when I got there, it was a foot too high, and all the guys around the shop were kind of laughing, saying, oh, good luck, hey, how are you gonna get that thing in there? And I thought, well, all right, don't really wanna leave it outside because this poor thing's already spent years outside. And uh, it's still really solid, actually. I mean, it's it's uh, it doesn't have too much rust, and um, so I thought, well, I can't can't leave it out, you know, I can't treat it that way. So I decided to go ahead and sit there and ponder it for a little bit, and then Frank Espinoza from RVA was there, and I thought, I know what I'm going to do. I decided to go ahead and take the wheels off, and lo and behold. This thing actually, even though it's got the subframe to go ahead and lift the uh, lift the pontoons, you know, take the pontoons out, I thought, no way, man, this thing rolls on the drums. Rolled it in on the drums, but then I was still two inches too high. And so I looked at Frank and a couple other guys and said, hey, you guys want to do me a favor? And they're like, sure, what? I said, can you sit in the back of this truck? <laughs> so they sat in the back, that with a couple of spare tires, was just enough to get it into the shop. So uh, yeah, so now the only thing that I have to do next is I'm gonna have to go ahead and, uh, um, you know, notch out the uh, notch out the wall. I also gotta tune this carburetor. Needless to say, this is the kind of car that you really don't drive a lot. <laughs> so unfortunately, I've, I've been kinda going with, uh, with the help of Josh, but uh, it definitely needs needs a little bit of tuning so but what are you gonna do you know kind of fun so let's uh let's take a walk around and uh check it out hey you guys <laughs> So yeah, just kind of checking things out. So this is uh, this is good for two people, believe it or not. And obviously you can't be uh, too big, but here are the controls inside the bucket. And what's kind of cool is you basically get up there and you start, you know, the, with the motor revving up and the hydraulic pump going and so forth, you can go ahead and control it and start to, start to raise it up. What's interesting, I always love the fact that Volkswagen is so, you know, smart about using you know whatever they have at, at their disposal i like this pedal here okay we got this pedal here and then when you come down here and look you see what it's connected to and it's basically a brake that suggests it's hitting uh what looks to me like almost uh would be just a regular type of bus master cylinder 
anyway, um, that's the landing pad for this thing. It's a little dirty, so I apologize for that. You've got your control lever over here, your purge valves, all the little all the solenoids and uh, pump and so forth. I think you guys saw the, the sticker here, and it shows right there in their model number V80, which is pretty cool. Now the cool thing about this truck, and actually this might be a good place to show you, is uh, like I said, it's actually, it, it's pretty dry. Um, I had to do a couple of things to it because unfortunately it had sat long enough that um, the uh, gas tank, the gas that was in it, uh, just solidified. So that was kind of a problem. Uh, I've got the, the uh, pedal pan off of it right now. Oh, there's my screwdriver and extensions. See, that's how we lose tools. <laughs> anyway, uh, put in a brand new gas tank from Wolfsburg West, and then right here to your left is your uh, hydraulic fluid tank. And um, oh. rumor has it that uh, when David took, uh, you know, when, when uh, he took this car uh, at the port, I guess I think it was still loaded up onto a truck or something. And unfortunately, he went ahead and started messing around with the hydraulics. And while the thing was still tied down, um, it started to go up and it kind of kind of cracked something. But anyway, um, wow. I don't care because the thing's really cool. And obviously, I can drive it down the street. <laughs> But, I mean, when you look at a typical single cab, you know, in a truck, I mean, the floors are actually pretty solid. That's just surface rust right there from the hydraulic fluid. But the uh, the panels that you normally see, they're in great shape. I just haven't put them back up since I put the gas tank in. Um, really nice. Um, you know, hinges and stuff as well. So it's kind of, it's pretty neat how it's actually uh, fairly solid. And then... Now, one thing really cool, a lot of times people don't uh, don't recognize um, right away are the taillights. If you notice on the taillights, they actually would have been here originally, but they deleted them and they put these plates and they put them out more for better uh, better visibility. Now, I just thought it'd be kind of cool to obviously get the license plates of the VW bucket. Now, one, another thing that's kind of funny is the... Um, is the prop. If you notice on a regular deck lid, as it comes all the way up, it would actually hit here. So it's a uh -huh. short little prop. Isn't that cool? So short little prop, like I said, it's got 40 horse. And over here to the left, I've disconnected, because you can see the crack in it too. I've disconnected the pulley that actually connects the hydraulic system to the motor uh, or vice versa. I mean, if you look at the engine pulley down here, you'll see that it's got a place for an extra belt and um, that belt runs that, that pulley and which then pumps the uh, hydraulic fluid from the tank over by the gas tank and feeds the system. But um, for the most part, this motor, low mileage, very low mileage. Uh, so kind of cool. Also, um, if you notice, this is the original color, VW gray. That was the, uh, the original color of this little guy, or big guy, I guess you could say. And, um, Pretty solid. The corners are pretty decent. I mean, there's a little bit of rust, but nothing, nothing like the crusty art bus. <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, the other thing too that, that's always kind of unique to these commercial cars are the bumpers that are painted like this. Better visibility. Um, now the difference between a V60 and a V80, you'll see the pontoons um, are actually spread out where on the V60, you'll have one of the pontoons here because obviously you've got the bulkhead comes down, but the other one and uh, basically ends just in front of the wheel and it only had one pivot point, so it didn't need that much stability um, like this one would just because of the fact that you have these two, these two pivot points. Um, again, here, this is basically a little where the control box is and, um, and go ahead and uh, connects plugs in like that and right here right behind the uh the seat is a mess now i did some junk back there but these are the switches here that once the motor's running you flip the switch on and basically it powers up the um the back control system 
Now the uh, the other thing too over here, this which is kind of funny, I was trying to figure out what that was, but there is a cable that goes down here, and what it is, it's it's a it's a throttle. You can actually go ahead and pull it. It revs up the motor, so it pumps a little bit higher, kind of like when you're listening to the tow truck. They rev up the engine. Um, obviously, you've got your European uh, locking steering column um, assembly here. And this little light here, this is kind of neat. This this is supposed to go ahead and light up as well when uh, when it's functioning. Um, up here you have uh, you've got your light switch and again this is a 64 so basically you'd have your wiper switch you'd have a light switch and uh, but right here you actually have the light for the blue the blue spinning light up on top and um, and then this little blue light would also come on to go ahead and let you know that that's going these are your your hazards <laughs> those those that got working um, let's see here what else now what's really neat is the interior it's super clean i mean the paint's clean the panels are clean so you get an idea of what it's what it's supposed to look like originally um looks like some probably will the, their head there huh um everything inside here seems to be pretty original with the exception of and i don't know why maybe they were you know because i mean this is an original seat but it had the salt and pepper and it should be more like the uh the gray with the off-white piping over there Door panels, still original, but you know, obviously some of it's missing. So it's it's gonna need some work. You see a little bit of rust here by the dog leg. Um, again, that's the least of my worries. Um, these little lights here, which is kind of neat. I can't remember if uh, that one will actually go on or not. Let's see. Oh, wow, yeah. it's still so, kind of fun. Uh, <laughs> they uh, they come that's on cool. when uh, when your lights are on. So letting traffic, oncoming traffic know that, you know, watch out for the pontoon, especially if you're working in foggy, uh, you know, foggy conditions. What's really neat about this car that I was surprised about, I know it's small detail, the glass, since it's low mileage, it's, you know, it's original glass, but it is super, super clean. I mean, it's no pits, nothing like you normally see. Um, the roof for the most part is in pretty decent shape. You've got a little bit of surface rust going up here. One of the things that kind of bummed me out, of course, it always seems to happen when you get a car transported, uh, emblem taken. So I need to get an original emblem and then put that booger on. Uh, other than that, that's, um, that's pretty much about it. Uh, when, you might be able to look under here. This whole framework here goes right underneath the entire car, almost like a, like a little skeleton, which is kind of neat. And so, um, realistically, and from what I've heard, you disconnect, um, you disconnect the electrical, you can actually unbolt this thing, and it, it comes off. So, I'm not going to try it. So, right down there, you've got the, uh, the M code plate, and you'll see the whole series of M codes, which is kind of neat. Okay, so if you look at the, uh, the numbers here, it was... Um, it was on the 6th day of January. This, like I said, this is a 64. And when you're starting to look at the uh, at the M codes, we'll, uh, we'll start with 056. Now, 056 basically is steering and ignition lock, or as most people call it, European, you know, European ignition. Uh, and then 065, it says inscribed axle load limits. So originally it would have actually had the numbers for the load limits uh, on the side of the truck and then um, you've got 071 which is a second locker hatch for single cab so what we call you know dual treasure chest and then the uh, 118 does it look like 118 yeah one so then you get to uh, 118 118 is uh, without side or tailgates so that's gonna be a unique M code there as most trucks would come with them um, obviously they didn't need them would have been kind of cool if they came and then you could sell them later but <laughs> and then uh, the last uh, code is uh, code number 215 and that actually says it's a one ton payload and a 1500 cc engine so you know what I think I might have said it's a 40 horse earlier I, I'm incorrect I meant to say 1500 so um, it's kind of funny because even though even though it's uh, 1500 this this thing is still pretty uh, pretty darn heavy so go for a ride in the back of this thing yeah yeah, mm -hmm. right, yeah. Let's, let's go, go.
to just stall it on the track. <laughs> Look, here comes the train, you guys. <laughs> Ruthman V80 uh, definitely definitely a fun toy hopefully you guys can check it out at the uh, next VW show whenever that might be so good times sure sounds tinny like Volkswagen huh <laughs> cool thanks for watching you guys hope you enjoyed you doing time lapse or what Yeah. <laughs> 